G'day crew, my name's Luke from Aquatic Rehab Spearfishing. I'm just sitting out here with the dog um, and a pile of venison front shoulder that I'm waiting to thaw out so I can mince it. Yeah, so while that's thawing, thought might as well have a yarn. Uh, that's actually some local deer and uh, that might be a good up and coming vlog as well if anyone's into that. Uh, before we get into this episode guys, we have a Patreon where I do spearfishing informational talks uh, just on video every single week. So we've got over nine hours of me talking on there at the moment and it's only about two US dollars a month plus just to go on there and get access to that. So yeah, if you want to do that, feel free to go into the description and, and that'll really help out. So this video here follows on from the dive I did with Mike um, out of the eight foot tinny. And uh, you had the sharks and the wind and the snapper and all the rest of it. Basically, I wanted to get Mike a kingfish. Now, he's only been diving for a couple of years. He's shot maybe a couple of kingies in the past, but he hadn't had one during the season. Now, I also wanted to get Mike a kingfish because um, he'd taken me hunting on some axes that he's got a few times through winter. And uh, we got into some quite nice pigs. We got a carrier. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was just trying to sort of return the favor there by um, getting him a good bit of fish. Yeah, so we had an invite from a mate, Wayne. He, he had a couple of hours. He just basically wanted to go out for a quick meat run of him and his daughter and um, blasted out to one of the weed lines that we usually dive. Now, it was pretty dead. Um, we're looking for boreys and dories along the weed line. And then there's always quite a few kingfish um, in the heat of summer sort of milling up on this point uh, when the current's coming on there. Uh, particularly if there's quite a lot of bait in there. You didn't really see anything too interesting on the weed line apart from um, one sort of quite good sized blue moki and then move right up to the point and then um, you're yeah, down a bit deeper I could see um, school of kingfish hanging out down on the sand. So took a dive, pretty healthy, pretty good sized school. <laughs> Sort of stretched out, took a shot at one with a little roller because um, the fish at the back weren't really going to move in. Um, I'd seen a couple of really nice models out the back but just settled for a, um, a school fish um, after sort of seeing how they were acting there. And uh, yeah, landed that one and got it on the boat. And then it didn't take long for more kingfish to move in. So, you know, within sort of five minutes, um, I had this dive here and I seen quite a nice fish cruising through quite shallow and just sort of, you know, keep the fish curious. Cruised past me and then, and then went past Mike and he made a really good head shot on it. And at the same time, Wayne smacked one and um, just rodeoed it. Now the boys are onto some kingfish. <laughs> Wayne's got one here too. Good thing to watch this, like uh, Mike sort of figuring out how to land them. The fish has obviously still got quite a bit of power in it. And I kept trying to sort of say to him, grab it at the base of the spear rather than the back of the spear because the fish is bending the spear and you don't have any control over it. It can keep swimming away. Take into the shaft near the fish so then he won't be able to move. Grab it real, real hard. As soon as I said that, he, he grabbed it right up at the base and um, you get a lot more control over it and then get your hands into the gill plate. Yeah, good shit. No matter what anyone says, uh, my advice is to always grab the fish into the gill plate and squeeze. Yeah, they really end up giving up and then you've got a good icky. Remember to go inch or two back behind the eye too and try not to get your knife through into your hand there. So yeah, that's pretty good. I got Mike in and then Wayne got one and Mike got one. Right. 
and um, we went and checked out one other spot and it's pretty bloody dead, not much current. So that was our sort of couple hour dive and we were done with it. Um, quite a bit of meat there. Thank you. I don't know if we're going to smoke them or I guess we'll get them back up to fitty and then just see what we're going to do with them, eh? Yeah, happy days. Shot back up to uh, Mike's pad. I think we see Mike's daughter on the, she was walking to work, pulled over and um, Mike showed her the fish in there. And she was frothing too, so she's just starting to get into spearing, so it's pretty cool. Hey Ray, how are you? some more good. Mice down, like they've oh. even got some long whites on them as well. Holy cow. days. Oh, that's chilled down hard. That's amazing. Oh, it's cool. Oh, yeah, it's pretty cold on top, even though there's no ice. <laughs> and I can't remember exactly what we did. I think we had a bit of a hang filleting session. Smoke it up, yeah. Ah, it's a really good gun. I love oh, yeah. the gun. I just knew that the size yeah. that I wanted to get it. Yeah. And we ended up taking one of the fish to um, fitting a butchery. Yeah, we'll come, come down pretty soon, mate. Thanks Hamish, Legion. Is Hamish the Viking one? Nah, Hamish is the is the one. Mo. Yeah, I think I've lost it now, but grows that sort of Mo. Right. That's actually some weight, man. Yeah, well, I've got the camera, so you're gonna have to bloody. Oh, Rena's gonna have to do the work. And uh, we dropped it off with them. Basically, with the plan was to pick it up the next day once it was done, and uh, we also had an invite out the next day with Toby Hunt. Um, who was going to take us out for a bit of a spear and um, going to go up for a look for some snapper and stuff like that. And then ended up going back and doing a bunch of uh, sashimi with um, Mike and Laurel, Mike's wife. And uh, yeah, we just ate way too much, but that was mean. Wasabi is mine. The next day, um, Toby picked us up and we shot down the coast, and this was just a quick dive as well. Yeah, basically I went out onto some points and that had quite a few kingfish swimming through. Like a 10 kilo king hanging around if you want one. Um, didn't really want to shoot one because we already had those ones from the day before. Put some yards into the snapper but didn't really see anything that good. Ended up heading in close and having a look for some crayfish. Got a reasonable sized cray, and then um, when I was looking for some crays, I found this um, real dopey panty just having a snooze, and, and um, yeah, got a shaft into it, and then got those back to the boat. So, pretty tasty little uh, little feed there. Oh, that's a good cray, and a little snap. Before we left, actually, it was the visit was quite nice, but it started to turn a bit funny. I'd seen a couple of bronzies, and um, Shot a uh, Perori and then what I wanted to do was just get some content with the big Sony camera, some pictures and stuff like that. So um, just chummed up the um, Perori on the anchor line and um, had a bronzy come in and, and got some video and photos and stuff like that. Um, now anyone that thinks that's a bit weird, um, try to think about what the average spear I was doing shooting kingfish and fighting kingfish and having all that blood and that big signal of stress fish in the water or someone um, dropping a line down and catching a fish or using a burly bomb or a burly bag or something like that. Um, sharks heavily associate, bronze whalers in particular, heavily associate fish with um, spear fishermen uh, regardless, but they are still a fish eating shark. Um, they're not really a mammal eating animal. Um, not to say that they wouldn't take a seal or something like that, but um, this is sort of, um, yeah, I mean, we just swim with so many of them, it, it doesn't really bother me. It's not advised to do that if you don't have much experience with sharks. So I did that and then we ended up jumping in in the um, marine reserve on the way back and getting some pictures and some video and stuff there. I was like, you see some snap, Ray? Yeah, I 
set up a hammock. Good pointer. Get clean in here though. I was about to bugger off back home. We basically went and picked up all this um, smoked fish. What have you got there, mate? <laughs> Feels like it's about, about seven kgs worth of maybe eight. Smoked fish, that's pretty good. Out of 12. Ooh. Yeah. Damn, yeah, look at that. That'd be good, man. <laughs> Working. Sick. That one on the right there. Just, just go. Yeah, that'll nice. be bloody good on crackers, eh? It's a bit of bloody yeah. blue vein, mate. Oh, yeah. Still got heaps of fish to feed, the, feed everyone oh, there. Yeah. Oh, man. Sure, mate. I might go give Wayne a piece. Yeah, yeah, do that. Sweet man, see ya. Sweet. Yeah, he just does such a mean job in there. And I swung back past and actually gave Wayne a bit um, on the way back home. So, yeah, hope you like this episode. Uh, we've got another one with Wayne where we get into some boar fish and, and find a school of sharks and stuff like that. And um, yeah, we've got the pig ones with, um, with Mike down in Coromandel as well. So we've got a few Coromandel adventures there that I need to vlog out. Uh, maybe if you guys want to vote what one you want to see next in the comments, uh, pigs or, um, or the boar fish episode, pig shooting over the indicating dog or um, the boar fish uh, shark episode. Uh, whatever one gets the most sort of um, comments or votes, I'll um, edit that one up first and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.